Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? No, you have to actually guess. Mm. Nostril hair? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, man. Hey, soul brother. My man, my main man. <laughs> Hard bad vibes, dirty Harry. Don't bring me down, Bruce. <laughs> Such a spaz. Take a chill pill. Relax. Have a drop of the soft stuff. Use the force. Keep on trucking, man. Can you dig it? <laughs> Just chill, man. Be cool. Catch you on the flip side. Sit on it, Potsy. Nixon now more than ever. I know what you're thinking. Did I fire six shots or only five? I am not a crook. Add 70s reference here. <laughs> Because you see, keep bunny, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. You pinball wizard, you. Ah, oh, that was a, that. That's another good one. I should have put on there. It's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your reaction videos and kindly pay attention. A large part of this podcast I secretly base on the old MTV sock puppet show Syphil and Ollie. Uh-huh. The joy of Syphil and Ollie was that it would have a lot of it, it was very repetitive in that they would have a lot of the same segments. And in those same segments, they would have they would do the same things but differently each time. Yeah. Like, like they would have uh, Precious Roy, their uh, fake uh, QVC type show where they would sell something. And one character would mention something and the other character would say, oh, you know, the problem that I've been having with blank. And then the other character would say, yeah, you have some serious ass blank problems. And they would always try and do it a different way each time. But it was the same thing, but different. Yeah, I I, I that's that's what I base large portions of this on. Okay, I'm, I'm doing the same thing, but it's got to be different. So when it comes to those little bits, my family helps a lot. Like for example, uh, this morning I was like, "Hey guys, give me something from the '70s. I need '70s references. Come on, guys." <laughs> so you know, people people help me with with these things. And, and how would and, they know? Uh, Natasha helped out a little bit. She's like the only one who would be able to help out. I think Natasha said, I am not a crook. Uh, and Emerald said, how old is star Wars? And I, that's when I put use the force. Yeah. Take a chill pill. Blackula. I forgot. Blackula. (laughs) Each week, the dreaded council of daddy farts. Selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment that has been painstakingly chosen with the expressed purpose of bettering our listeners. Nay, people everywhere. But not you, naysayers. Oh, wait. I just said nay. Nay, people everywhere. Oh, snap. I just excluded myself. Uh Uh-oh. I accidentally just recused myself from this homework assignment. Oh, well. And this week... So on to the movie. (laughs) Yeah. This week we are headed to the 1970s with a a full episode of the mind-numbing, testosterone-dropping, sperm-sterilizing 1970s variety show, The Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle Show. Yes. The bear. That's my favorite part. It it, oh. it was so nostalgic for me. Because yeah. I remember I used to watch this show. Yeah. So so uh, memories were coming back. Yeah. And uh I was a kid. Leave me alone. What the fuck? Oh, uh, that's wonderful. The Hudson brothers. What a bunch of shit faces. Oh my god. Uh one of the shit faces though. Um, because they had their extras. You yeah. Know? yeah. One of them, the one with the sandy colored, he kind of looked like the middle brother, but he wasn't. Yeah. 
He had sandy yeah. hair. It was shorter, and he had a mustache. I could swear that that's the unknown comic. Oh, maybe I'm surprised because I had seen him many... once. It, I've seen some uh, a number of variety shows before, and I don't remember other variety shows having this many uh, credited cast members. Yeah. It's the Hudson brothers and also 14 more people. <laughs> that that was kind of surprising. Yes. There's what? a lot of people like rolling down that that uh that that little factory thing in the mm-hmm. beginning in the opening credits. I'm sorry, but what was so special about these guys that just screamed, "They deserve a television show?" I have I have no idea. Um, I, I I really have no idea. I I don't know why they should be known for anything. I the one thing about being working in the receiving department at work is that I'm always listening to my own music. Yeah. And after a while, it just kind of gets a bit boring and repetitive. And so I, I brought a radio in there. And sometimes I listen to the radio stations just so I can get something different instead of hearing like my music over and over again. Yeah. So one thing I started doing is I, I set up a playlist on YouTube of music and music videos and stuff. And so I just put on YouTube. I did that uh, yesterday. I just put on YouTube and then a bunch of music videos and stuff that I chose started playing on my phone. And that was a nice distraction. And and also there's a visual connection to it that I like. And anyway, I was looking for full albums on YouTube and there's a surprising number of full albums on YouTube. And I found an album. I haven't listened to it yet, but one of the Hudson Brothers albums is available on YouTube. Oh, God. And, and, And I'm like... Fuck, I'm desperate for music. What the hell? So I just added that in my list of uh, of music, and I haven't gotten to it yet. I'll probably get to it Friday or Saturday if I continue on my YouTube. I I think there may be an extreme danger in you getting to it. That's that's what I'm worried about. It just seems like I don't know. Like it would probably just be bland adult contemporary 1970s music. Like, uh, like Caribbean Catalina Breeze from Documentary Now is what I imagine <laughs> yes. every song would sound like. And going to the movies. <laughs> That's my favorite episode. Yes. From Documentary Now. Love that so much. Uh, so I think the mere existence of this lame ass show is a prime example of the outright hideousness of 1970s variety shows. Uh, Yes, I would think it's a good example. Now, keep in mind that this one is a children's show. But that's the thing. It didn't start out that way. No, it did not start out that way. That's so absolutely weird. It so was, anyway, it was a replacement for Sonny and Cher. Yeah. So let's so let's discuss this. Uh, variety shows came at a specific time in America. TV was growing in popularity. More and more people had TVs in their homes. TV became just a staple. Everyone had a TV. Everyone was getting more and more TVs, and there were more TV stations and more TV networks, and they needed cheap new content. And there were two cheap supplies of cheap television content content that TV stations and networks could always count on to to both fill time and be cheap as hell. Professional wrestling and variety shows. Yes. Variety shows were cheap. They were simple. They were, they were easy to make. And they featured the world's most broadest comedy. <laughs> I haven't seen this broad comedy since uh, Jay Leno's Dancing Edos. Dancing. dancing, yeah, his dancing judge Edos. Oh, I I missed that. I think, yeah, he, uh, um, 
Have you guys heard about the O.J. Simpson trial? Of course you have. That's what 80% of the all of my shows are going to be about for the next year and a half. <laughs> the O.J. Simpson trial. So, yeah, he had the dancing Judge Edos. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, I'm so happy that I lived to see the day that Jay Leno left television. Yes. Because, because oh, man, he was just everywhere for what seemed like so long too long too long and my god yeah. to replace johnny carson are you fucking kidding me yeah yeah no yeah. no and, you're so wrong yeah and because it is a variety show that means that pretty much anyone can host one yes you don't need to be a good actor. You just have to be able to read a few cue cards in front of a cardboard looking set. Fuck, Johnny Cash had a variety show for fuck's sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to be fair, Johnny Cash's variety show was amazing. If for no other reason, Johnny Cash loved Andy Kaufman. Did he? Yeah, the Johnny Cash show had Andy Kaufman on all the time. Really, I didn't. I didn't know that. I, I, I would, I would have placed the uh, Johnny Cash show earlier in time. Nope, it was it. It may have been like seventy one, like in the early half of the seventies. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, and I would like to take this time to say I'm very excited about Andy Kaufman right now because there's a graphic novelist, and he has this really weird, simple style of artwork. Almost like highly detailed stick figures. But anyway, his name is Box Brown. Okay. And he, 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 I didn't know about him until I read his last graphic novel, which was a detailed look at the history of Tetris. <laughs> okay. And you might think that it's impossible to write a detailed graphic novel looking at the history. Okay. Looking at the history of fucking Tetris, but oh my god, this man did an amazing job. And it was the Russian intrigue and video, the world of early days of video games. And it was just absolutely amazing. And I was blown away. So then I went to see what else this guy did. And it turns out that before Tetris came out, he wrote this lengthy uh, graphic novel about the life and times of Andre the Giant. Really? Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, how did I not know about graphic novelist Box Brown before? Oh, well, I'll be sure and uh, keep checking our book search system to see what new graphic novel he has coming out. And holy crap, this year he's releasing a new graphic novel. It's called Is This Guy For Real? The Life and Times of Andy Kaufman. Oh, wow. And I'm so excited. For this guy and his weird art style to be doing the life story of Andy Kaufman in a graphic novel form. Seriously, his look at Tetris was amazing. <laughs> it's such a good job about the history of Tetris. So anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about Andy Kaufman right now. Yeah. So there were so many variety shows out there in the 70s. The Smothers Brothers, Johnny Cash, Glenn Campbell's Super Fun Happy Good Time Alcoholism Show. Yes. Uh, Hee Haw, Donnie and Marie, The Midnight Special. Again, The Midnight Special had Andy Kaufman on a, a couple of times. Does The Midnight Special count? Because that was a music show. I think so, because again, Andy Kaufman came on and, and it, he did a bunch of comedy stuff on there. And uh, like Tony Clifton shit. And uh, he, he the, the one of my favorite things that Andy Kaufman ever did is he came on the Midnight Special and he sang a song, but the only line was "I trusted you." Yes, one of my favorite things he ever did. Just "I trusted you, I trusted you," mm -hmm. just that for like three and a half minutes, and it's so great. Tony Orlando and Paul Mollive. Yes. Oh no! Wait, Dawn, Dawn. Yes. I was really close. I was in. The ballpark. Uh, Captain and Tennille, the Jacksons, Shields and Yarnell. That goddamn Brady Bunch. Yes. I want to just slap each and every one of those. <laughs> Freaking Brady's. 
that were on that horrible freaking show. And of course, who could forget what was probably the most popular reality show of all time, Super Fun Time Express, starring America's number one sex symbol, Peter Falk. <laughs> How did the theme song to that go? It was sung by Peter Falk. Yeah, it was sung it was by like, Peter Falk. It was, um, geez, it was something like Super Welcome Fun Time. To the super Fun Time. Super Fun Time. How you doing? Comedy show. Something We're like that. Do some fun stuff, and let me just ask you a few questions. It made the top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where did the variety show go? It was killed. Murdered. By the radio by star. N no, oh. by NBC. By NBC? Spe specifically... It was killed in the 1980s by NBC president Fred Silverman. He saw a news story about Japan's biggest band. And so Fred Silverman, the man who is also responsible for almost destroying SNL. Yeah. So, thanks. so Fred decides, oh, if this is the hottest band in Japan then I can just literally pick these two girls who have never spoken a word of English, drop them in the middle of Hollywood, and create America's hottest television show. <laughs> oh. Pink Lady and Jeff is now widely considered one of the worst TV shows in America, nay, in the world, and it killed the variety show! <laughs> now people still occasionally try and bring it back, Sorry, Neil Patrick Harris, it's not happening. Although I really did like uh, Maya and Marty. Maya and Marty. Huh? It was only on for a season like two years ago, I'm uh, maybe three years ago. But it was uh, Maya Rudolph and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the church lady. Dana Carvey. Uh No, no, then I'm thinking of the wrong person. No, uh, uh, no, David Ed Spade. Grimley. Ed, Ed Grimley. Grimley, uh, short, Martin Short. Martin Short, yeah, Maya and Marty. And it was the two of them together, and it was skits, and then they'd have a musical guest and a special guest, and it was just really, really funny, and I really liked it, but no, it was a variety show. And, uh, yeah, no, variety shows are not coming back. SNL was a bolt of lightning. Yes. That hit an albino penguin. <laughs> it happened once, and it, it's just, you can keep trying to bring it back, but it's not going to come back. Yeah. So, the Hudson brothers. Yes. Uh, they were allegedly huge in the 70s. Uh, I, I wouldn't say huge. You, you know who says they were huge in the 70s? Huh. The Hudson brothers. They say yeah. that. Yeah. They were hey, first huge. Off, first off, let me say that life was really hard in the 1970s. Yeah. I know I was born in the late half of the 1970s, but I remember it perfectly. In the 1970s, the internet was so slow. Oh, God. That, that people didn't even use iPhones. It was, it was like, Barely existent. Yeah. It took so long to upload anything on Instagram in the 70s mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, people just didn't even use Instagram. Just to well, even, like, load onto view. Like, talk about uploading a picture. Oh, yeah. that would take, like, months. Well, to, to, to really let you know how slow it was, I, I tried uploading a, a picture from Lidsville. Remember yeah. Lidsville. Um, and, it finally uploaded in 96. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely insane. I still have pictures of Suzanne Summers that are trying to download. Yeah. <laughs> so. White. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
the Hudson Brothers, I sure as shit have never heard of them before. They didn't have number one hits, but they sure as shit had a number of number 20 through 189th place hits. Did they? Yeah. I, I, I didn't think they ever came within sniffing distance of a hit of any kind. Well, to be fair, uh, Steve Martin's King Tut was a hit. Technically. Did did the Hudson Brothers write that? No, but uh, the Hudson Brothers can't be as bad as Steve Martin's King Tut. Oh, oh, I see. I'm just saying, you know, compare and contrast. Yeah. So in 1974, the Hudson Brothers get a TV variety show on CBS. It ran in prime time from the end of July to <laughs> August of the same year. Yes. And, and uh, you know, it, it, so then the, in the next month, September, they got this variety show for adults and they ran it fucking Saturday mornings. <laughs> really? Oh. This Breaking Bad show? No one's watching it? Well, here's my here's my pitch. The Breaking <laughs> Bad Wowie Zowie show. Ah. Oh. We add a bear. <laughs> Starring Walter White. Uh the teenage kid, the bear. The bear. And that's this show. First off, the majority of the commercials that are on this specific YouTube uh, full episode that we watched are just old ad, old ass commercials that someone put into this video. They're not the actual commercials that aired on TV. Really? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it looked like like someone just in during the commercial breaks just went on archive.org and picked a bunch of old toy commercials. <laughs> Because here's a commercial from 1972. Here's a commercial from 1978. Here's a black and white commercial. Here's a commercial in color from 1979. So, so yeah, no, they're all over the place. And uh, so it, when I realized that, like, near the end of the episode, it kind of upset me. But whatever. Secondly, I love these fucking opening credits so fucking much. <laughs> I am constantly saying the bear and no one knows what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> like I'm, it's weird that I'm constantly making references to the opening credits of the Hudson brothers, razzle dazzle show, but that's just yeah. how I roll. And you are probably the only human on the planet doing so. Yeah. 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 And his amazing Australian emu. Now that guy I remember very well because he he did a lot of different variety shows and talk shows yeah, and things like that good. at yeah. the time, and it's just it just took the Hudson Brothers for him to land a steady gig. Yeah, but yeah, no, this shit, this show is shit. This show um, is shit. Yeah, but it it but but it's it fun when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't about the show. The show is shit, but I wanted to talk about the world of variety shows. That's some interesting shit, you know? Yeah. Some interesting stuff. I was rooting for Neil Patrick Harris because I'm like, oh, somebody's bringing back variety shows again. Wow, what a surprise. I'm sure this is going to survive. Oh, wait, it's Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, he's one of America's most beloved gays. Yes. If anyone is going to succeed, it's either going to be him or Wayne Brady. And... uh <laughs> So, yeah, no, Neil Patrick Harris, I'm rooting for you, but no, it didn't happen. People don't want variety shows anymore. But, but uh, you know, nice try. Good, good effort. Yeah, good on you. I'm going to have to and, look that up and watch an episode. Yeah, Maya and Marty is really good. And, and Neil Patrick Harris, he did all right. It It's not the best, but... There's one skit on there, which is now a very famous meme. Yeah. Where he goes to the doctor and his doctor is, uh, 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 what's his name? The guy who played, uh, Captain Hammer. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nathan Fillion. Firefly. The, yeah. Yeah. Nathan Fillion. 
And so uh, they just do a bunch of puns to each other. Yeah. Like, uh, so, so, Neil, how are you feeling? I'm feeling horrible, doctor. Oh. And, 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 yeah, it, it, it's it, it's really cute. Anyway, someone turned it into like a little comic strip where they're both passing these puns to each other, and now it's a meme. I keep seeing it over and over again. And they're referencing they're referencing shows that they've been on, and and uh, it's like, yeah, this place really does feel like a castle to me. <laughs> oh God! It's so so again. The that, world's that most sounds like a people. shame, and maybe I should not go look it up now. <laughs> but Maya and Marty, they had some funny ass skits. I I would have a hard time because I, I never liked Martin Short, but I loved Maya Rudolph. Yeah, and so Maya Rudolph kind of cancels out Martin Short because I was never the biggest fan of Martin Short either. But Maya Rudolph cancels him out. Okay, because Maya Rudolph is freaking amazing. He he would definitely need a canceling out force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I really like their show. And, and also, Jiminy Glick, fuck you. That was oh, some of the most boring. God, I fucking forgot Jiminy Glick. Fuck Jiminy Glick. I was never into any of that at no. all. Fuck. <laughs> totally, I totally forgotten Jiminy Glick until you put him back in my freaking head. Sorry, man. <laughs> ah. Jiminy Glick. And it's like, oh, like, yeah, like uh Martin Short's like, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to invent my own Dame Edna. Yeah. Just someone that's loud and abrasive that can have his own fake talk show. Yay! <laughs> that's what America needs. He had a movie. I didn't. I did not see that movie. He had a movie. He was he had a in movie. movies. No way. Oh, there the was Jiminy a, Glick. Movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, never bothered to see that. But the 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 Maya and Marty was like a summer show, so it feed some of their cast members were people from SNL. Yeah. Like uh yeah so so it it really did feel like a. Like a summer SNL, like a like a diet SNL. Okay. Like a like a, a zero calorie Saturday Night Live with lemon. Ah. So I I liked Maya and Marty, but yeah, it didn't go anywhere. And sadly, that is it for homework this week. And we sincerely and legitimately so legsinitsirmitly. These are hard to do. <laughs> we honestly hope that your hearts, minds, and urethras have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're getting here, getting out of here that easily, bucko. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are looking at MTV's Jackass. Specifically, Jackass and its aftermath. Because Steve-O is 43. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville is 47 or 48. They're all old now. And uh, what's the name of that guy? Bam Margera. He hasn't been the same since his best friend, Ryan Dunn, died in a car accident. He just had a DUI, like maybe like a year ago. Uh, so so it, it, we're, we'll be looking into the history of Jackass, but primarily what has Jackass done to that? Ah, okay, good. We're all seeing them when they were super young, and now they're getting all older, and it's interesting to see what has happened to these men. The answer is in a, a really good article from page6.com. I will send it to you. In fact, hell, I, I, got, I, I got this right in front of me. Uh, open up Firefox. Uh, skip over all of the hentai porn. <laughs> and... Andy Kaufman. The article is from page6.com and it is called Jackass Left a Wake of Pain, Arrests, and Addiction. Okay. Inside the Dark Shadow of Jackass. <laughs> I'm interested 
he, he, I'm interested in this because, you know, watching Jackass back when it was on TV, you know, everyone is laughing at these guys, but I was one of the few people going like, yeah, you laugh now, but what's going to happen when you're 55 and you have this hideous mark on your arm from the botched tattoo that Henry Rollins gave you? Oh, God. You know? Like, you really got to think about the future of these people. How are you all going to look when you're 60? Yeah. Beating yourself up like that. So I'm interested to see this article. And uh, that is homework next week, Jackass. So be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast.